Barnum. It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Produced and transcribed in Hollywood tonight for your listening pleasure. Hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Hey, Costello, Costello, come here. Come over here. Why are you late again? Well, how about I stop at the music show to get one of our records of our baseball routine? But there was a guy in there ahead of me and bought every one they had. Who was? Leo DeRosa. <laughs> he wants to find out who's out first. Well, we're all right. Uh, but Happy oh. Chandler won't tell him. All right, well, all right, forget about it. Look, uh, Boy, we how are you up. doing on that job I got you last week? Oh, forget that. What do you mean? The job. Yes. Well, I worked there five days. And <laughs> the man fired me. Five days? Isn't that pretty short notice? George, I defy anybody to find out how dumb I am in five days. Oh. <laughs> All right, all right. I'm a dope and that's I that. I know that. I know. <laughs> that should teach you. You know, that should teach you the value of education, Lou. Huh? That should teach you the value of education. Education? Yes. Did you graduate from college? No. High school? No. Grade school? No. You're getting hot. Well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> Doesn't that make you uh, an ignoramus? No, but it sure helps. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, I my folks couldn't afford to send me to school. We were so poor, my mother used to send me out on the street to bake for a piece of whole wheat bread. Why whole wheat bread? We were poor, but we were proud. Oh. <laughs> but I had a happy childhood, Abbott. You did? Every morning, I'd take my father's hand and we'd walk to school together. And then at four o'clock, I'd call for him and take him home again. <laughs> That's all you might... The old man was going to school. I'd take him home. <laughs> I know. Costello, your mother, your mother must have had a struggle with that family. But now you can make you can make up to her. You can make up for everything. Yes. Remember that Sunday is Mother's Day. That's right, Abbott. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. Oh, then you do remember Mother's Day. Sure, my mother always sends me something. Uh, <laughs> why, you idiot? You're supposed to send your mother something. Now, last year I sent my mother a check for a hundred dollars. By the way, that reminds me, I never did get that check back from the bank. No, but I'll bet your mother did. I, uh, <laughs> please, uh, hey, hey, no remarks like that, Costello. My checks are good. I have plenty of money. Why, it cost me $10,000 a year just to live. Abbott, it ain't worth it. No, it's oh, not. Nah, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> what are you going to send your mother this year? I think I'll get her a brand new 1947 Cadillac. Where can you get a 1947 Cadillac? You can get all you want of them from the Cadillac Company if you're a property owner. Well, no, but what kind of property do you have to own? The Cadillac Company. The ca oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you idiot. You haven't got enough money to buy a new car. Oh, no. Then I'll send her my collection of rare coins. I got it right here. Look at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two quarters, three dimes, and a nickel. Well, these are not rare coins. With me, they are. I... <laughs> Abbott, will you let me $10 to buy my mom a nice present? No, I will not. If you need money, I know where you can get $1,000 just for spending the night in a haunted house. Good. <laughs> That's just the kind of job I've been... What's the matter? What's the matter? Well, well, what kind of house did you say that was? A haunted house. You see, the owner wants to sell it, and he's willing to give $1,000 to the first man that would spend the night there to break the spell, you know, the spell of the ghost. Abbott, I ain't going to get mixed up with no ghosts. What do you mean? When people stop walking and talking, I'm through with them. No, no. <laughs> I am not that dopey. No. <laughs> Costello, a ghost is not real. When you see a ghost, you see an apparition. Abbott, when I had my apparition for apparentosatis, all I saw was a doctor and a beautiful nurse. No, no, no. Costello, I'm not talking about an apparition. I'm talking about an apparition. <laughs> apparition like in hallucination. Abbott, what in hallucination are you talking about? <laughs> Costello, I'm talking about ghost spook stealing. Abbott, that ghost may spook to me, but I ain't spooking to him. <laughs> I ain't holding no conversation with those strange ghosts. You nitwit, you can't speak to a ghost. No, you just said the ghost spooked to me, you idiot. A spook is a ghost. You have nothing to be afraid of because 
because of the ghost, there's uh, the house. You see, the house is only a room. Boy, well, um, what did you say? And I really mean, what did you say? I said, uh, <laughs> I said the ghost. <laughs> I said the ghost in the house is only a rumor. I wouldn't care if it was the little. Now look, you dummy. This ghost is a rumor. A rumor is a tale, a vicious tale. That did it. I ain't going to no house where there's a ghost with a vicious tale. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Listen, Gossel, I'm trying to explain to you what a ghost is. Now, let's take, for example, a ghost motion picture. Did you see the ghost picture that Irene Dunn did? Dunn did? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of talk is that? You mean Dunn Dunn? No, no, no. Look, look Gossel, Irene Dunn did a picture, a ghost picture. Did you see the picture that Irene Dunn did? Look at it. If Irene Dunn did it, I'd done thought, you all. Oh, no. <laughs> Costello, please. Will you listen to me? I'm talking about the star Irene Dunn. Now, you know that Dunn does pictures. Dunn doesn't? Well, shut my mouth. I didn't know that Dunn doesn't. I thought that does doesn't. <laughs> does, does, does everything. Yeah! Now, look, Costello, I'm talking about the ghost picture that Irene Dunn did. When I say that Irene Dunn did a picture, I don't mean that Irene Dunn done a picture. I mean that Irene Dunn did a picture, and the picture that Dunn did is what Dunn's done. Oh, when you say that Irene Dunn did a picture, you don't mean that Irene Dunn done a picture. You mean that Irene Dunn did a picture, and the picture that Dunn did is what Dunn's done. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> with Mamzelle, a small cafe, Mamzelle, a rendezvous, Mamzelle, the violin, the warm sweet, and so are you, Mamzelle, and as the night stands by, a kiss became a song. Your lovely eyes seem to sparkle just like wine does. No heart ever yearned the way that mine does for you. And yet I know too well. Someday you say goodbye. The violin will cry. And so will I. And then. Just like Wanda, no heart ever yearned the way that man does for you. And yet I know too well, someday you say goodbye. When violin will cry, and so will I. Well, Costello, have you been thinking about taking that job in the home house? That thousand dollars would uh, buy your mother a nice present for Mother's Day. Yes, have it. I've been thinking of the ghost all day. I even went to see the ghost picture that Irene Dunn did. There's an old guy in that picture that takes beautiful girls into the haunted house, and they're never seen again. That old man must be a fiend. He may be a fiend, but he ain't no dope. <laughs> well, I continue here. Oh, yes, yes, You yes. should have seen what went on in the haunted house. In the first scene, there's a gunshot and a body. Murder? Murder. In the second scene, there's a gunshot and another body. Murder? Murder. In the third scene, is a beautiful blonde sweater girl. 
Murder? Murder! <laughs> well, never mind that. Hey, here's the office of the real estate broker who is offering that reward to the man who will spend the night in the haunted house. Costello, you're going to earn that money. And you can send $1,000 to your mother. Yes. My mother could use that money to help one of our relatives get cured of a nervous breakdown. Who's the relative with the nervous breakdown? After I spend the night in that haunted house, me. Now, oh. <laughs> dog fans, we're going in there and get you that job. Well, good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Well, my friend Costello wants to spend the night in your haunted house and earn that $1,000. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. As the cow said to the farmer with the big hands, boy, what a jerk. <laughs> Costello, have you ever had any experience with ghosts? Oh, sure. One time I saw a whole flock of ghosts sitting around a campfire. What were they doing? Telling people stories. <laughs> oh, good. Well, then, Costello, you'll take the job. Not me. I ain't spending the night in a haunted house. Costello, you're not afraid of ghosts. You're not a spineless jellyfish. You're not a sissy britches. You're not a cringing yellow coward. You want to bet? <laughs> Mr. Brown, Costello will take the job. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Costello, the job is yours. Here's the address of the haunted house, and the skinny Anna said to Marilyn Maxwell, here's the key. <laughs> well, I'll uh, see you tomorrow morning. I hope. Well, come on, Costello. <laughs> Let's go across the street to that bookstore, and I'll buy you a book on how to handle ghosts. Look out. Look out for that car, Costello. Look out. Well, what do you know? He stopped for us. Must be an Easterner. <laughs> Hiya, fellas. Why, Hi, Skinny hey. Ennis. Skinny, Costello's going to spend the night in a haunted house. Oh, yeah? Yep. You know, our house used to be haunted. It was haunted by the ghost of a bottle of bourbon. Oh, you're not, Skinny. How could a bottle of bourbon, a uh, bottle of bourbon can't die? Oh, no. That was the other night my father killed it. <laughs> Abbott, if that skinny ever becomes a ghost, he will need a sheet. An empty tea bag would cover him. No, no. <laughs> Never mind him. Let's go into the bookstore. Pardon uh, me, miss. That lady over there where the ghost books are. I saw her. Pardon me, miss. Uh, could you tell me where well, we... Well, if it isn't Mr. Albert well... and Mr. Costello, you fought little one, you. <laughs> uh, well, well, miss. What are you doing here in the bookstore? Oh, I just dropped in to bruise among the best Best, best shooters. Best shooters? Oh, Abbott, well, you know what best shooters are. That's like Faroover Umbor and how Brune was my bully. <laughs> By any chance, have you read Uncle Toon's A Kubin? Yaus. <laughs> but I prefer, but I prefer the three little kittens who lost their muttons. <laughs> well, I must be totaling along. As we say in Siamese, Old Saki pull a cut of cheese, sir, and kiss it to you. And an old sock full of cutter's cheese and a kiss it to you, too. <laughs> yeah, come on, Costello. Come on. Let's look for the ghost book. Hey, say, there's, there's Marilyn. Ah, lovely Marilyn Oldsmobile. Uh, <laughs> Marilyn Oldsmobile? You mean Marilyn Maxwell. Abbott, did you ever see a Maxwell with a chassis like that? I... <laughs> Mr. Abbott, hello, Lewis, darling. Marilyn, darling, every time I see you, my heart goes pitter patty, knock knock, pitter patter. Wait, wait, knock knock. What's the knock for? My engine always knocks when it's warming up. Why, <laughs> Costello, Marilyn, Costello is going to make a thousand dollars by spending the night in a haunted house. Oh, Lewis, aren't you afraid? Afraid of what? Well, well, suppose while you're sitting there in that haunted house. An ugly, old, decrepit, hideous face should appear before you. That's one thing I don't have to worry about. Abbott's got a date tonight. All right. <laughs> Come on, Costello. We've got to get that ghost book. Come on. Lewis, you remember the last time we met in this bookstore? When the clerk wasn't looking, you, you kissed me. Mm -hmm. Shame on you, Costello, making love to Marilyn in a public bookstore. Uh, where did you kiss her? Between the novels and the natural history. I... <laughs> for me to come and sit with you tonight in that haunted hall? I couldn't let you do that, darling. Suppose a ghost should come up and put his arms around you. Oh, a ghost wouldn't do that. Every ghost has his own ghoul friend. <laughs> Bye now. Well, come on, Costello. It's getting dark. We've got to get over to that haunted house. <laughs> well, 
Costello. Here's the haunted house. Brother, what a spooky-looking joint. Uh, what's the matter? What's the matter? Abbott, uh, there's a big black thing following me. <laughs> you don't bet your shadow. Yeah? Then why ain't it doing what I'm doing? I... <laughs> Never mind that. Open the door. Abbott, it's dark in here. I ain't gonna stay in this house. Oh, don't be silly, Costello. There's nothing to be scared about. Careful, Costello. Don't step on that hat tail. Okay, Abbott. Abbott? <laughs> Abbott, who said that? I told you not to step on that cat tail. I don't see any cat. There is no cat. Just the tail. <laughs> Costello. It's almost 12 o'clock midnight. Now, if you want to get that thousand dollars, you'd better get inside that haunted house and stay there until morning. Habit, there must be something awful wrong with that house. Why? It's been vacant two years. Not even a veteran has tried to rent it. <laughs> hey, Habit, look. What's the matter? I see two hands in front of me. Now they're coming together. What is it? 12 o'clock. Uh, it's 12 o'clock. Na, 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 na. Close some watch time. <laughs> that must be Pacific Ghost Time. <laughs> hey, Abbott, I'm getting out of here. There's a guy I want to see outside. Oh, me. See you later. I right, come back here, you sissy. Look over there, Abbott. There's a ghost in the corner. I think it's a lady ghost. What makes you think it's a lady ghost? It's wearing a low-cut sheet. <laughs> I'm getting out of here now. Shame on you, you coward. Only a baby would be afraid of a ghost. <laughs> Abbott. Please pass me the pablum. <laughs> Hello, boys. I'm a ghost. Wait a minute. If you're a ghost, what's your sheet? You were in a blanket. It gets cold at night in California, kids. <laughs> Abbott! 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 Oh, what's 
What's the matter with you, Costello? Look at it. It's one of those spooks coming up the stairs now. Hey, wait a minute. Costello, you're right. Look, look, look. But, but, but don't, don't worry. I know, I know how to break the spell of the ghost. You must pull the sheet off that thing. Now, I'll stick around in the back of it, and you pull the sheet off. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, all right, then. You pull the sheet off, and I'll stick around in the back. That's better. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's the same thing. <laughs> Wait, Costello. Grab the sheet off the ghost. <laughs> Costello. It's Mrs. Wetwise. Abbott, put the sheet back on. <laughs> Why, Mr. Abbott, what are you doing in this haunted house with that horrible Halloween pumpkin? Oh, pardon me, it's Costello. Uh, I wish you hadn't said that, Mrs. Whitworth. Only today I was telling Abbott what sparkling white teeth you had. Oh, did you notice them when I smiled? No, I passed your house this morning. They were hanging on the clothesline. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Mrs. Wetwash, what are you doing in this haunted house masquerading as a ghost? Boys, I'm going to take you into my confidence. Come here. I'm going to reveal a secret that nobody else knows. Maybe she's going to tell us her right age. Hey, quiet, Costello. What is it, Mrs. Wetwash? Well, Costello, are you sure you can keep a secret? Certainly. I saw that new picture last night, and I wouldn't even tell anybody why George Apley was late. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you. You see, this house isn't really haunted. No? It's just me playing the part of a monster-faced ghost. That's the best piece of casting we've had on this show all season. <laughs> uh, you shut up, Costello. This is Wetwash. Why do you haunt this house? Well, because I don't want anyone to buy it. My late husband, Herman Wetwash, once owned this house, and he hid a treasure map somewhere in this room. Now, if you boys will help me find that map, we can dig up the treasure and split it. And we'll each get a third. Okay, but remember, Abbott, I want my full third. Twenty percent. Costello, we'll help Mrs. Wetwash. We can each take turns haunting the house until the map is found. Uh, Costello, you take the first eight-hour shift. Good. I'll, I'll... Wait a minute. Why should I take the first eight-hour shift? All right. So, Mr. Abbott, you take the first shift, and, Costello, you can come next door to my house, and we'll go into the parlor and next. <laughs> well, you talked me into it. Oh, you're coming with me? No, I'm taking the first shift. <laughs> I've been sitting here by myself in the dark for hours, but the darkness doesn't frighten me. Being alone doesn't frighten me. All this silence doesn't frighten me. <laughs> that frightens me. <laughs> hey, Abbott! <laughs> Abbott! That must be Abbott coming. He must have heard me. Hey, Abbott, I'm in here. Hey, Abbott, you're all dressed up like a ghost. Where did you learn to walk on the ceiling like that? Look at Abbott. He's walking on the ceiling. He's walking on the ceiling? That ain't Abbott. That's the ghost. Get me out of here. <laughs> Don't be frightened. Don't be frightened, little fat man. I'm a kind ghost. I never hurt anybody. I can't help but if I'm a ghost. Oh, you, you seem all right. Tell me, how did you become a ghost? Well, up until three weeks ago, I was a man just like you. And I had no place to live. I looked and looked and looked for a house. And finally, I located this house. And when I found out it was vacant, I dropped dead. <laughs> That's a sad story. That's really a sad story, but my Uncle Mike became a ghost under very similar circumstances. He did? Yes, he spent three years tunneling his way out of San Quentin and came up in the gas chamber. <laughs> Gee, that's sad, too. Yeah. But I wish you'd do me a favor. There's a very ugly woman that keeps running through this house every night, and I'm afraid of it. None of us speaks will speak to her. You mean none of you spooks will speak to her? Now, don't tell me how to do a routine. I used to do jokes with a shell-up. you have to pay her much money? Seven bones a week. <laughs> Must have been red skeleton. <laughs> Seven but tell me, Mr. Cortella, who is that woman that comes here every night? Oh, that's Mrs. Whitwash. She's looking for the treasure map her late husband hid in this room. Oh, that old thing. It's over there behind the third loose brick in the fireplace. Oh, thanks. I'll get the map and I'll take it to her right away. Third loose brick. Here it is. Here it is. Hey, Abbott. Mrs. Whitwash, I found the map. I found the map. 
Wait a minute. Here we are. Here we are, Costello. Oh, look, Miss Gravity. He's found the map. Oh, Costello, this is wonderful. I'll call the man and tell him that he can sell the house right away. Now, wait, meet me in the garden, and we'll dig up the treasure and split it. Hey, Costello, are you sure you're reading that map right? We've dug up this whole garden and we've found no treasure. Oh, Costello, let me see that map. Here it is. Read it for yourself. It says take two steps forward, two steps to the right, and three steps back. Let me see that. Here you are. Take two steps forward, two steps to the right, mm -hmm. and three steps back. <gasps> Why, you whale-wasted, white-brained weasel? This is no treasure map. This is a dancing lesson from Arthur Murray. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm ruined. What am I going to do now? Shall we dance? Oh, get him out of here. <laughs> 